Good morning. Good morning. Wonderful time. I'm here in the, the city called Pretoria, and uh, I'm here to uh, to come and marry my daughter and uh, my son-in-law. Such a lovely place. Wonderful, be green, beautiful place. And I'm still speaking to you on uh, the subject that I st that I uh, have been busy now with a couple of weeks now. And that is seeing Jesus in the scriptures. Seeing Jesus in the scriptures. Now, I told you the Bible is a very dangerous book. It's a very dangerous book. It's confused and divided more people than any other document in the world. There's no other document that's confused and divided people as much as the Bible. Yet, its profound and its simple message continues to appeal and to overwhelm and absolutely transform people's lives out of all cultures, all ages, and all places. The Bible is a very profound document. And in the scriptures, Christ is revealed. Because Christ is in the scriptures. And I'll show you now, as I've, I've showed you in the past, I'm going to show you again. It is still the bestseller of all times. It's still the bestseller. Isn't that amazing? The scriptures as God has given us, the Bible is the bestseller in all the world. So from Genesis to Revelation, we see the Bible as one grand theme. And the theme of the Bible is Jesus and his perfect sacrifice to redeem the fallen image of God in mankind. His perfect sacrifice. So Jesus has come to give us a perfect sacrifice to redeem the fallen image of Christ. So the Bible is not about you. The Bible is about Jesus. It's about his sacrifice. It's about what he has done for us on the cross of Calvary. That's all about him. And guess what? Jesus is all about you. So if you want to know this, when you find Christ in the scriptures, you will find yourself. Man is always seeking to find where am I? Why am I here? What am I doing here? What is my purpose in life? There's questions about questions, more questions than, uh, than, uh, than answers. But I'm here to tell you now, the moment you find him, Christ Jesus, hidden in scriptures, opened up in scriptures, or revealed out of the scriptures, that very moment you will walk into a mirror and look at yourself face to face. For, because the Bible says in 1 John 4, 17, one of my most, most uh, 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 loved scriptures is 1 John 4, 17, where it says, for as he is, so are we in this world. Not one day, now, in this world. So you, when you discover the, out of the scriptures how holy he is, how righteous Christ is, and how accepted and favored he is by God, you will begin to see that so are you. So are you holy, righteous, accepted, and favored by God. So are you. As and, and as he is full of health, full of wholeness, full of full of life, so are you. Absolutely. Romans 5 verse 19 says, the Philip's translation says, We see then that as one act of sin exposed the whole race of man to God's judgment and condemnation, so one act of perfect righteousness presents all men freely acquitted in the sight of God. This is a profound scripture. This is a powerful scripture. When you see, we see then as one act of sin exposed the whole human race as, 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 as to God's judgment and his condemnation. So one act of righteousness presents the same humanity as freely acquitted in the sight of God. <clears throat> In other words, God, after Christ died on the cross, looks at mankind and he sees us through Christ as righteous, already righteous. So the disobedience of one man shows humanity as sinners. The disobedience of an, the obedience of another man shows humanity as righteous. That same humanity that was deemed sinners is now deemed righteous. Did you do anything to become a, to be, to be born in sin? No, you were just born into it. 
Now, do you do anything to, to, to be deemed righteous? No, you are righteous by God. But now for you to really tap into the worth of that, you have to hear this great, wonderful news. Christ has paid the price for you. He loves you. He, he, he has accepted you. And all you got to know is to re see Him revealed. And as you see, because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. When we hear it, His faith will stir up in us to believe. And as we believe, sons of God is revealed. Amen. So this is very important. So in, <clears throat> in Acts chapter 10 verse 28, Peter said, uh, he said, God has shown me that I should not call any man common or inferior or unclean. God has showed me. You see, when I begin to realize that, that we are the blueprint of the Creator, we are the absolute blueprint of Him that spoke, then I want you to know that any man that you look at, you should see him not as inferior, but you should see any man as, as, as worthy and favored by God and loved by God as you are. That's why God called us to love one another. Now, Luke chapter 24, you see, when, when Jesus, uh, we came to the two confused disciples on his way to uh, uh, Emmaus, he introduced himself, not through anything else, but the scriptures. He opened up the scriptures. He opened their eyes through opening up the scriptures. In Luke 24, verse 27, it says, And beginning with Moses and the prophets, he interpreted to them all the scriptures, the, the things concerning himself. So he could have said, I am Jesus. I am the one that you worried about. I'm the one that you thought was not going to rise out of the dead. I am the one. So don't worry anymore. Don't lose hope anymore. I am here. He could have done that. And they could have believed. But he chose to reveal himself out of the scriptures. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to reveal Christ out of the scriptures so that you can see who he is. He said to them, these are my words which I spoke to you. He came to the other disciples and he said, these are the words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses and of the prophets and of the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened up their minds and their understanding for the scriptures. If there's one prayer that I pray is that God will open up our minds and our understanding towards the scripture so that we can see Christ. The moment I see, you see him, everything else will fall in place. Everything else, the destiny of the word, the destiny of the logos, the word of God was not intended to be caged in a book. You cannot cage the word of God in a book. It was intended, it's not even intended to be a doctrine or, uh, or, 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 so, or something like that. It is supposed to be unveiled within the life of you and me. So the destiny of the Logos, the Word of God, must be unveiled through us. Our lives must unveil the Scriptures, the Logos, the Word. Human life in the form of sons of God is the most articulate voice of scripture. Human life in the form of sons of God is the most articulate expression of the voice of scripture. That is the truth. Jesus is God's language. You want to understand him? You can understand that Jesus is God's language. And in Hebrews 1 verse 1, he says, in many times it will be spoke through prophets and all that. And then he says, but now, from now on, I will speak through my son. God says, I will speak. So sons are the language that God speaks through. He is the language. So at the, at the, at the age of 90, we see John, the, the disciple John, the beloved, he starts writing the book of John. He finally starts writing the gospel of, 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 uh, of, of John. And he does not follow Matthew and Luke uh, where they are concerned about the genealogy of, uh, of Jesus, the natural lineage of Jesus, the Messiah. No, he introduces us to the beginning of Jesus before Adam was, before creation was. That's who he introduces us to. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. And the word, verse 9, became flesh 
and dwelt amongst us. Now I'm, gonna, I'm just going to break out the scriptures and reveal Christ out of the scriptures. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. When it all began, the word was there face to face with God. The word was there face to face with God. The beginning declares the destiny of the word. It would always conclude in God. The word is concluding in God. Nothing that is witnessed in the word in Jesus distracts us away from the father. Nothing. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen my father. Now, can you see that when we, we are as, 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 as human beings, we become the word as Christ lives in us. He dwells within us. The word is within us. And as the word is within us, when you look at me, you will see my father. When I look at you, I will see your father. That is what it really means. And, uh, and then it says in verse 4, no, verse 3, everything's existence is sourced in him. There's nothing that is here. The beautiful nature, the planets, the universe, anything, nothing is here that was not sourced in him. Their existence is because of him. There's nothing created that was not created by him. Nothing alive, nothing dead, no, no, nothing of the universe. Everything was created by him. He remains the exclusive parent reference of everything's genesis. There's nothing original except the word. The word is the original. From there, everything else derived. And verse 4, he says, his life is the light of that defines our lives. His life is the light that defines us. If you really want to know who you are, you need to ask him to shine his light upon you so that you can see him. And when you see him, you will start to see yourself. And verse 5, And the darkness was pierced and could not comprehend or diminish this light. The darkness represents, in this case, represents man's ignorance about his authentic identity. The fact that man is so confused about who he is and what we are and why we're here for. People are so confused. That's the darkness. But his light is penetrating that darkness through scripture, revealing Christ, the word of God. As he is revealed through scripture, the light of God shines through and it brings in the darkness where you did not know who you are. The moment you see him, that darkness turns into light. Somebody put the light on by preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. That is what God wants us to do. So in verse 9 it says, the authentic light of life that illuminates everyone was about to dawn in the world. This authentic light, Jesus was getting ready to be born. We are nearing December, and in December we are celebrating Christmas, which is supposed to be the, the, the birthing time of Jesus, although he was born in September, not December. But in any case, it doesn't matter. We, we celebrate the fact that Christ did come, that he did come as a baby, that he did come as a, as a human in our place, as us, for us. We celebrate that day. It was a day. A day because he was born in September. But here's the thing. If we understand that Christ is the light that illuminates our minds to understand who he is. So that we can understand who we are. That is coming to a place where you come and connect it, get connected to your original, your authentic identity. So the incarnation has got to take place. The image of God. When we see the word of God, when Jesus was born, this word became flesh. And the flesh of Jesus became visible. So the word that was always invisible became visible. Just think of it. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. And there was light. Three days after that, God created the sun, the moon, and the stars. So that light that God spoke was Christ. That was Christ that put on the light so that God could create. Isn't that amazing? Long before the sun was, was, was created, the moon and the stars, the light of God shone through the earth. In Him is the blueprint of our lives. In Him is the blueprint. He is the genesis of who we are. So 
they, he, he's, this, he's displaced darkness and brought life into us. He's the true light of our life, enlightening every man to the reality of who he really are, is. So in John 1 10, it says, although he was a stranger, no stranger to the world. He wasn't a stranger. Why? He created this world. He created mankind. He always was there and, and, and is himself the author of all things. He started everything. Therefore, he's not a stranger to the things that he created. But somehow, no one took notice. No one took notice. And verse 11, it was not as though he arrived on a foreign planet. He came to his own. We are his own. I want you to know that you are his own. Yet, his own did not recognize him. That's a heartbreak. If you look at the world, look at people, so confused about who they are, where they are, what they're here for. It's people that do not recognize him. I'm telling you, the moment that you recognize him, you will recognize yourself. <laughs> Verse 12 says, But to everyone, everyone who realizes their association in him, convinced that he is their original life. To everyone that's convinced that Christ is their original life, in them he confirms that we are his offspring, begotten of him. Can you understand? We are his offspring. We are begotten in him. And you don't know that until you realize that we are actually one with God and God is one with us. The moment you realize that... <laughs> That very moment, you will realize he, he, Christ confirms that we are his offspring, begotten of him. You know, that suggests, the scripture suggests that even though he came to his own, there are people that did not grasp, did not see him, so they could not grasp the original uh, uh, authentic identity. They could not see who he is, so they could not know who they are. Therefore, they lived like the Pharisees. They they uh, they called the wrong wrong man father. They followed the the father of lies, lies, just like the Pharisees, a foreign father. There's only one father. It's the Creator of heaven and earth, and he's your father. The father of lies is not your father. It is a false dimension. It is a false uh, reality that some people draw to themselves as their only reality. So God's legitimate fatherhood is not in is not is, is, is not a, in question here. It's not about his legitimate fatherhood. It's not in question. What is in question here is what we believe God is and what we believe about ourselves. Not understanding the truth that we come from Him. That is in question. What we believe is in question. You see, God is not confused. We are confused. He knows us. This is, a, this is what the gospel addresses in utmost clarity in the person of Jesus Christ. 1 John 5 verse 20. He says, He has come to give us understanding to know Him who is true and to realize that we are in Him who is true. He has come... To give us understanding. And I pray that God give you understanding this morning. Understanding to realize what is true. And to know that you are in Him who is true. 1 John 1, 1, John 1 13. It says, who were born. They're talking about Jesus. He was born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh. Nor of the will of man, but of God. And He is an example of us. So we have to discover our beginning, our genesis in God beyond our natural conception. Beyond the fact that I have a mother and a father. So man began in God. It's not the invention of your parents. You began in God. I, I showed you the scripture in, in uh, Jeremiah 1.5 where he says, You knew me while I was before I was formed in my mother's womb. You intimately knew me. God knows you. So... In, 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 uh, in John 1 13 we are born not, he was born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God he was born of God so we have to discover our beginning beyond our natural conception verse 14 it says and the word became flesh 
and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Suddenly, this invincible, eternal word takes on a visible form. Suddenly, the incarnation in him now confirmed in us. It's confirmed in us. God, his eternal thoughts now finds expression in human life. His eternal force, thoughts now finds expression in Christ, who is the Christ, the human. The word became human, a human being. We are his address. Don't look at somewhere, somewhere out there. God is in us. He dwells in us. The glory that we see is not a religious replica. No, Jesus is the authentic son, begotten son of the father and not by the flesh. In him, we recognize our true beginning. In him, we recognize our true beginning. So the glory that Adam lost is now again found in Christ. Is now restored in Christ. It restored to its fullness. You see, only grace, only grace can communicate truth in such a complete context. Only grace can communicate this message. If, you do, if, you, if you're still hanging on to the law, believing that you've got to do and, and achieve it through doing, you're going to miss the message. You're going to miss who you are. You're going to miss, you will always try to please God. Always try to see what I can do. Maybe I should fast 40 days and maybe I can, I can, can get the hand of God moving. Listen, God is in you. Christ is in you. Start to recognize who you are in Christ Jesus. John 1 verse 16, and of his fullness we have received. Of his fullness we have received. And grace heaped upon grace. Grace heaped upon grace. Of his fullness we have received. Grace heaped upon grace. You see, he is the source of our completeness. He is the source. Grace heaped upon grace. Grace prevailed against the tide of darkness. That, the due, that was there due to Adam. It prevailed against that darkness. Where we forgot who we were. Where we, where we, where we didn't know who we are and who God is. And, and we started to follow all funny stuff. Grace has prevailed against all that stuff. Because Christ has done it on our behalf. So 1 with John 17. For the law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. You see, against this backdrop of the law, Moses is representing the condemned state of mankind. He's a representation of our condemnation. But Jesus unveils grace and truth. He is the life of our design, redeeming redeemed the, our human form. Can you see? The one is death, the one is life. The one is darkness, the one is light. And Christ has become our life and our light. He is truth and grace, grace and truth in us. In verse 18 of John 1, it says, No one has seen God at any time. No one. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, He declared Him. So until this moment, God remained invisible to man. Invisible. Until this authentic begotten son of God, who is the blueprint of man's image and likeness. The blueprint of us. Until he brought God into full view. Now suddenly God is not invisible anymore. Now through the revelation of Christ, we see the father. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen my father. The moment you see the father revealed in Christ you die. Why? Because nobody can see the Father and still live. Now listen. The moment you see Him, you die to yourself, the old self. Then your eyes are opened. When you see Him, your eyes are open to your true identity, which is Christ in me. That is your true identity. Isn't that powerful? Jesus the Son is the official authority qualified to announce the Father. He and he is our guide who accurately de declares and he interprets this invisible God within us. He declares and interprets this invisible God in us 
Why? Because He now dwells within us. He lives within us. We are His address. The mission of Jesus wasn't to come and create another, another religion called Christianity. No, He didn't come for that. He came. What, what He came to do was twofold. One is to reveal our true identity and to redeem it. To reveal and to redeem. To reveal your blueprint image. To reveal who you really are. And to redeem that uh, uh, through 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 the, what he did for us on the cross. You see, to redeem the image and likeness of God in us. That's what he came to do. So many people see the Bible as an instruction manual. You say, this is the instructional manual, instruction manual. It's not an instruction manual. The Bible is Emmanuel. God with us. God with us. Revealing Him, revealing our, our, our redeemed identity. Seeing Jesus revealed in the scripture. We are gazing into a mirror. So when you see Him revealed out of the scripture, you are looking into a mirror and you are looking at your own likeness. When you see Him, it will, you will see Him face to face. You see, the moment you see Him revealed in scripture, you will see yourself. So any striving to become more like Jesus. You know, we, we have all these religious stuff. We, I want to become more like Jesus. I want to become more like... Listen, He's already made you more like Him. <laughs> You're already in His image and likeness. He's already paid the price for you to be more like Jesus. You are, for as He is, so are you in this world. Take it. That's the truth. So, but but if we if we... Keep on trying and trying and trying. We, it bears so much guilt and, and, and failure, fruits of failure. Why? Because we, we have guilt because we feel we can never be there. All the while we are there. You see, Christianity wants to take you sometimes. It wants to take you to, to a place. Whereas the fact is we are already there. Christ is in us. The finished work is, has been declared. It is finished. We're not running around. God is not running around. We're not running around. We must just accept it by faith. Hallelujah. Religion has majored in guilt and willpower. And, and, and that, that has brought, uh, uh, engaged us into stuff where we, where we feel guilty because we can't do it. Think I can better myself through self-improvement. You know, maybe I should fast. Though. Maybe I should pray three hours a day. Maybe I should, listen. I pray not because I have to pray three hours a day. I pray every day because He dwells within me. It is a loving uh, uh, relationship with God in me. And I'm in, I'm in Him and He's in me. And He's in you. Remember that. The Bible was never meant as a manual. It was meant as a message about Emmanuel. And we've got to understand God is with us. Every definition of distance between God and us has been cancelled. He's not up there in the heavens sitting there. He's here. We are already seated with Him in heavenly places. He lives within us. Within us. So when you look at scripture, don't see it as a mere instructional manual for moral behavior. Because that is a veiled message. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 15 says, Whenever Moses is preached or read, the veil remains. When you read the law, the veil remains. If you stick to the law, the veil remains. John 1 17 says, Mo Moses represented the law. Jesus revealed grace and truth. It's only in the mirror where the miracle transformation takes place. place. And the blueprint image of our maker is again realized in us. When you see him, it's a mirror. And you begin to see the blueprint of who you are. Jesus is that blueprint of who we are. So, so seeing Jesus in the scriptures will cause you to see yourself. It will cause you to see the true you. The true you that God knows. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 16 it says, But we all with unveiled faces. Behold as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. And are being transformed into that same image. As you see him. You are being transformed into that same image. Not by what you do, but because of what you see. <laughs> it's not about what you do, because it's already done. 
is what you see that transforms you into that image in the mirror. So from glory to glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. It is the Spirit of God that changes us, brings us in a position where I go from glory to glory into the mirror image of what I see, the authentic Son of God revealed. And I see myself from glory to glory. His Holy Spirit changes me. It's not that I have to say, Look, I've got to pray three hours a day. I've got to, I've got to, I've got, before I go to sleep, I've got, I've got to pay, pay, pray at least two hours. No. You're already there. You're already there. Jesus did not come as an example for us only. He came as, as, as an example of us. When he died on the cross, he didn't just die for us. He died as us. <laughs> he died as us. So seeing Jesus in any other way would be looking sentimentally and religiously and it will never bring lasting change. Never. Now, in Christ, we may know ourselves even as we have always been known. 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says, For now we see in the mirror dimly, but then when, the moment that I see him face to face, now in part, but the moment I see Christ, I shall know just, I shall, I, then I shall know just as I always am known. The moment I see him, I will know myself as I have, as he has always known me. I will know because I've seen him. This is the truth that will set you free. This is the true truth that will bring a life of design to you. 1 John 2 verse 7 says, John writes that it is not a new message. This is not a new message. It is a, this word, uh, it is a word that was from the beginning. Yet it is new, he says. For that which is true in him is equally true in us. Let that fall into your spirit. That which is true of Christ is equally true of you. That which is true of Christ is equally true of you. If you understand that, 1 John 4, 17, for as he is, one of my most favorite scriptures, as he is in the heavens, so are we in this world right now. So we see in 1 John 5, 20, he says, we know that the Son of God has come and that he's given us understanding to know him who is true. And this is the understanding that we are in him who is true. You have to understand. He will give us understanding to know him who is true. And then this, the understanding is to understand that he is in you who is true. We are true. Because we are in Him and He is in us. Isn't that powerful? That is a powerful message. Paul brands the gospel with two words. Grace and peace. And he does that to, to distinguish between the message and the revelation of the finished work. And that of the law of Moses. Grace and peace. It's a matter of grace or rewards. It's rather you accept the grace by grace what God has already done for you. Or you will want, try to work out so that you will find a reward. It's, it's either peace or striving or guilt or condemnation. Peace or striving or guilt or condemnation. You make a choice. I choose grace and peace. It's already done for me. I don't have to do it. He's already done it for me. By grace, my life becomes his life. His life is my life. Hallelujah. That is powerful. Grace and peace expresses the sum total of every beneficial purpose of God towards us, which is now realized in Christ. It's finished. To discover Christ in the scriptures is the key to discovering yourself. Like in a mirror, it unlocks the door to, the, to a divine encounter. Now I know that I'm in him and he's in me. I have that knowledge. Now that the genesis of our being is unveiled, as Christ is being unveiled, our most intimate and our urgent quest for always seeking to find is at last satisfied. 
I have got nothing that's chasing me to find out who I am, what I'm here for. I know who I am. I know what I'm here for. I know who is the blueprint and the genesis of my life. I do not look around and run around and seek to find I've already found and therein lies my peace. Therein lies my love, my acceptance. Therein lies the fact that God is my Father. Father. Hallelujah. You will always seek until you find him. You will never rest. You will always run around and seek until you find him. So faith is not a fairy tale. Faith, Jesus Christ is the substance of our faith. He's just, he's both the author and the, and the conclusion of our faith. He is the accurate measure and the blueprint of our design. Ephesians 4, 7 says, grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So grace is the gift that's given to us. Grace is the gift that was given us. And that defines my individual and your individual value. The fact that God has given you grace. It's great to know yourself. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18 says, and we all. Now with a new understanding, a new understanding, a new understanding. See ourselves in Him, in Him, as in a mirror. Therefore, we are changed from an inferior mindset, a mindset that doesn't know who I am, doesn't know God, doesn't know that Christ has already paid the price. From an inferior mindset, now it goes to, to I, I am in a revealed opinion about Jesus Christ. I have now got a revelation and that determines my opinion about him. The revelation that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. This is the mystery that was hidden for the ages and for generations. It is Christ in you. Colossians 1 27. Jesus is not hiding in history or in space. Or in the future, he is, I am in you. I am in you. Allow this to become your personal revelation. Allow this word to become, Christ is within you. There's no greater reason for studying the scripture. When you open the scripture, look for Christ, you will find him. God invested all that he has, and he has redeemed our original value. So the moment you understand about your, you come to the understanding about your authentic identity and that matches what God believes about you, that very moment the seed in the fruit matches the seed that was sown. The moment you believe what God has always believed about you, that very moment, the seed that was sown matches or the, the seed in the fruit will match the seed that was sown. You have to see that. That's powerful. So from now on, no longer I know no, uh, any man by the flesh. Why? Because I know that Christ is in all and he loves all. So Jesus didn't point to the sky when he said, my address is in the sky, and the kingdom is in the sky. No, he pointed to us. He said, the kingdom is in you. The kingdom of God is in you, within you. I want you to know God is within us and he loves you. And he wants to reveal Christ to you. And I want to pray for you this morning that God would give you understanding and that he would open up your mind, your spiritual eyes to see this so that you can see yourself as he is. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would give us wisdom and understanding, that you would reveal Christ out of the scriptures to us so that we can see the word of God revealed out of scriptures. So that we can see ourselves as you see us, Father. And as, as we see ourselves as you see us, and that matches, Lord, from that very moment, my fruit and the seed in the fruit will match the seed that was sown in my life. So my life will be a life well lived by the grace of God. I pray for every year my hearing my voice. I pray, Lord, that your, that your wisdom and understanding and the opening of their minds and the, the unveiling of their eyes will take place so that they can see Christ. And in seeing you, look face to face and see themselves in a mirror. I pray this, Father, in Jesus' name. And I thank you for your kindness and your grace and your mercy and your awesome love towards us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. 
Thank you so much for sitting with me and sharing the word and, and becoming part of the word. May you grow in your understanding and your and, 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 and may your eyes be unveiled to see the true your true authentic identity, which is Christ in me, the hope of glory. Amen. Amen.